Now, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. In the previous problem, I did a simple circuit where I used Kirchhoff voltage nodal analysis and superposition uh, to solve the same circuit, but it was rather a simple example. In this case, what I wanna do is I wanna solve this circuit over here, which again has two sources, but I've included another branch with more resistors because I want you to practice these methods in order to get good at them. That's the only way to get good at something is to practice it. So let's go ahead and use the voltage node method to solve this circuit, to find the voltage at the various nodes in this circuit. And in another video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the exact same problem, but I'm gonna use the superposition method in order to solve the same problem. So let's go ahead and set up the voltage node method. I'll show you the steps to work through this circuit. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the voltage node method. Here's my circuit. Uh, I've assigned some values now for the resistors. They're all gonna be one ohm resistors. And for the constant voltage supply, this is eight volts and the constant current I've set it to six amps. And I've also identified two nodes on this circuit, right? I've identified the node E1 here. My goal is gonna to be to find what is the voltage at this particular node and also what the voltage is over here at E2. Now for E1, I could have also assigned it to this one. Again, this is connected here by an ideal wire. This ideal wire has no resistance, so it really doesn't matter whether you put E1 here or whether you put E1 here, it has to be the same. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do now is, uh, if you're new to this method, what I would first suggest is just pick a direction of the current, and it doesn't matter whether you get the right answer or not, but uh, let's just start by doing that. So I'm gonna assume that we're gonna have a current flowing like this. Uh, then I'm gonna assume that there's gonna be a current like this. Uh, we have a current flowing up, and let's just set the current flowing down over here. And that's kind of important because, uh, again, this is going to identify the voltage drop across each resistor. All right, so we're first gonna focus on the node E1. Okay, so let me just write that down. So for node E1, all right, so this is gonna be the equation, right? The current flowing into E1, at least from this side, so that should be a positive value. So I'm gonna write that as, uh, the voltage of this supply, which is eight. Again, minus the voltage E1. That's the potential difference between uh, the upper left-hand corner here, right? This upper left-hand corner has to be at eight volts or at V. And the voltage at this node here is E1. So there's a voltage difference between those points equal to V minus E1. If I wanna get the current now, I need to divide by the value of the resistance, which is R1. So this value, this whole term here, this is the current flowing into E1. Well, that has to be equal to, you have to look at all the currents flowing into E1. So now there is a current flowing out of E1 going through this middle branch over here. Uh, so that one, I'm gonna assign a negative value to that since it's flowing out. Things that are flowing in are going to be positive, things flowing out negative. And the value of this one, this one's a lot easier, right? Because it's E1 and the voltage down at the other end over here this here is zero volts, so the potential difference between this point and that point is E1. And the amount of current flowing down is simply going to be E1 and divided by that value of the resistance, which in this case is R2. All right, now comes the slightly more complicated part over here. How do you deal with this? Again, since this is an ideal wire, you just kind of forget about it. So this node and this node are really at the same potential. There is no voltage difference between them. So really, the current I flowing in is really flowing into this node. So what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to add the current I, right? Each one of these terms represents a current, either flowing in or out. And now I'm also, I forgot to identify a current in this other branch. I'm gonna assume that the current's gonna go in this direction. And if the current goes in that direction, uh, let me clean up the, uh, the text here a little bit. Again, this was a voltage E1. All right, the only thing I have left to do for this node over here is to take into consideration um, the current flowing away from this one through the resistor R3. So if something flows away, it's going to be a negative value. Let's go back to black here. And the value of the current, again, it's the potential difference. Notice the way I put this, E1 minus E2, and divided by the value of the resistance, which is R3. Okay, that's it. Now all of this has to be equal to zero. I'll just write it on this side. So we have an equation here for node E1. This is going to be our first equation. If you look at the number of unknowns in this equation, there's really only two unknowns, right? We have E1 is an unknown and E2 is an unknown. 
So what does that mean? That means I need at least two equations in order to solve for this. And the second equation is going to come from looking at the second node. So let's go ahead and do that. So for the node uh, E2, Okay, again, we're gonna use the same thing. We're gonna look at the currents flowing in. So there's current flowing in over here on this side. So that's going to be positive and it should look really, really similar to this term, right? Here was the current flowing in or flowing away from E1. So over here, this is what it should look like. So we have E1 minus E2 and divided by R3. This first term here is the current flowing into this node. And now there's a current flowing away from the node that's flowing down here through the resistor R4. If it's flowing away, I'm gonna put a negative sign here. And the value here is the potential difference divided by the resistance of that branch. So in this case, it's E2 divided by R4. And that there has to be equal to zero. Whatever current flows in has to be the same current flowing out. So here we go, we have two equations. I'm gonna call this equation one call this equation two, and we have two unknowns, E1 and E2. At this point, what you can do is simply substitute the values. I'm gonna hold off just a little bit because I wanna look at these equations in a little bit more detail on the next page, and then we'll solve for the voltages E1 and E2. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, our goal is to find E1 and E2. Here are the two equations, I've rewritten them. We're gonna start with equation E2. I'm gonna get an expression to write E2 as a function of E1, and then I substitute it into the first equation. So what you can do here is simply uh, factor out the terms, right? There's two terms here with the voltage E2. So I can first write E1 divided by R3, and then both of them are going to be negative here. And I have one over R3 plus one over R4, and multiplied by the voltage E2, and all this has to be equal to zero. All right, what you can do now is uh, again, I just want to write E2 as a function of E1, so you can bring this term to the other side. Let's go ahead and do that. Just a little bit of algebra here. Let's keep this term the same. You should notice that this term here in the bracket that includes the resistors R3 and R4, right? these kinds of terms should start looking familiar to you. right? This looks like an effective resistance when you have two resistors in parallel with each other. All right, and the last step, what I'm going to do here, I'm gonna put this on a common denominator. So actually, if you do that, you get R3 and R4, and here you get the sum, R3 plus R4 if you do that. And again, all this still gets multiplied by the voltage at uh, point E2. All right, and now the last step, I just wanna write it E2 as a function of E1, so I bring this whole term on the other side, but notice I already had an R3 over here. So actually what you can end up doing here is just cancel out since it's on both sides of the equation. And now this term simply becomes R4 divided by R3 plus R4 and all of this multiplied by the potential at E1. Now for this particular problem, all these resistors are one. So this becomes very simple. It becomes one and here you get one plus one, which gives you two. And there you have it. So the voltage at E2 should be half of the voltage at E1. So if this is five volts, this one has to be 2.5 and so forth. Pretty straightforward. Now this equation here should also look pretty familiar to you. This is nothing more than a voltage divider. Right, it's a voltage divider, right? When you're getting the potential right in between two resistors like this, this is what they call a voltage divider. You'll often see this term come up. Okay, now that we have E2 written as a function of E1, I have to simply go back to my first equation. I can substitute that back over here. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I am left with one equation and one unknown. The only unknown will be the value E1, and then I can solve for it. So let's go on the other page and do some algebra. Okay, so this is what's gonna happen now. I'm just gonna substitute E2 into the first equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we're left with VE1 divided by R1 minus E1 over R2 plus I. And then minus this whole term here is simply gonna to reduce to here I'm gonna have E1 minus half an E1. So I'm gonna be left with half an E1. Should simply look like this. And all this should be equal to zero. All right, now what you have to do is simply group together all of the E1 terms and bring them on one side. So on the left-hand side, I'll just keep the voltage here, which I know is eight, and the current, which I know is six. 
uh, those terms are going to be left as is. And then I'll group together all the E1 terms on the other side. If I bring them all on the other side, they're all going to turn positive. And I'm left with something like this, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and plus something like this. And that all gets multiplied by E1. So all you have to do now is divide through by this bracket term. And you're left with one expression for E1. So let's go ahead now and just substitute the values. So what you end up getting here is this first term here is 8 divided by 1 plus 6 equals. Now this whole term in the bracket, well, what do we get? We get uh, 1 plus 1, and again, plus 1 half. And that's only because all the resistor values I chose were all 1 ohm resistors, if you remember. All right, do a little bit more algebra. What you end up getting here on the left-hand side is we get 14. And on the right-hand side, uh, the term in the bracket gets 2. 2 plus a half is 2.5, uh, which is 5 over 2, multiplied by E1. So the voltage E1 at the end is simply 2 times 14 divided by 5, uh, 28 over 5. Put that in the calculator. I think you should get around 5.6 volts. So let's go ahead and write that. So that means that this voltage up here should be 5.6 volts. Remember, we had our voltage, which was 8. So that means that this point here was 8 volts. Uh, that means this point over here is also 5.6. This is also the same. And now E2, well, E2 I can easily find. Look at equation 2 right here. I just solved for what the voltage at point E1 was. All you have to do now is just take half of that value. Half of that value should give me 2.8 volts. Let's go ahead and put that on our diagram. This is 2.8 volts. You know down here is always 0 volts because I've grounded this whole side. So this is 0 volts. Okay. So this becomes very easily now. You can solve for the current anywhere. Uh, you know the voltage difference across all of the resistors. It's very easy to find the current. Okay, so this is how you apply the voltage node method to a slightly more complicated circuit.